The largest, most massive stars end their days in titanic explosions known as supernovas. Our own sun will never self-destruct in this way. It's physically impossible for it to do that. But there are some stars in our part of the Milky Way galaxy that are in their final stages of life before blasting themselves apart. It might seem odd that stars which start out with the most mass and therefore the most fuel also have the shortest lives. But stellar monsters, tens of times more massive than the sun, squeeze their cores harder through gravity, raising the core temperature and causing them to burn their central supply of hydrogen very rapidly. Whereas the sun is about 5 billion years old and still only middle-aged, a star that starts out with 50 times the mass of the sun will have a lifetime of only a few million years. Toward the ends of their lives, the biggest stars deep in their interiors become very hot and fuse progressively heavier elements in a series of shells. At the same time, they shed material furiously so that they become surrounded by clouds of gas and dust. When eventually their cores become clogged with iron nuclei, they can no longer produce fusion energy in their cores. Their outer parts then collapse rapidly, no longer supported by radiation pressure from the center, before bouncing outward in a stupendous explosion, a supernova. In our part of the galaxy, we can see a number of giant stars that seem poised, ready to detonate in this way. One of them is A.G. Carinae, which lies about 20,000 light years away and is what's known as a luminous blue variable, or LBV. LBVs are incredibly rare. Only about 50 of them are known among the galaxies that make up the local group, including the Milky Way. A.G. Carinae is surrounded by an expanding nebula of gas and dust that's being shaped by a fierce stellar wind blowing out from the star's surface. The nebula is about five light years across, a bit more than the distance from Earth to the nearest star beyond the Sun, Alpha Centauri, and was formed when about 10 solar masses of material were blasted into space during a major eruption several thousand years ago. LBVs undergo a few such outbursts over a period of tens of thousands of years before exploding altogether as a supernova, leaving behind a collapsed core in the form of a stellar mass black hole. Another object that gives the appearance of being even more unstable and close to self-destruction than A.G. Carinae is a star in the same constellation, Eta Carinae. It's about 7,500 light years away and bright enough to be visible to the unaided eye. Eta Carinae actually consists of two stars orbiting around each other every five and a half years. The larger of the two is one of the most massive stars known. It probably started out somewhere between 150 and 250 times as massive as the Sun, and has since shed about 30 solar masses into the surrounding space. Currently, it's embedded within a dense cloud of gas and dust known as the Amonculus Nebula. This was ejected during an outburst that was seen from Earth in 1841 when Eta Carinae briefly became the second brightest star in the sky after Sirius. Of all the stars in the Milky Way that might explode in the near future, within the next few hundred thousand years or so, the nearest one to us is a famous orange star in the constellation Orion. Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse as it's popularly pronounced, is a red supergiant with 750 times the sun's diameter, lying about 530 light years away. Towards the end of 2019, Betelgeuse started to dim very noticeably and there was some speculation that perhaps this was a prelude to it blowing up. But it's since brightened again and it's become clear that the dimming was due to the passage of a dark dust cloud across the star's bright face. Betelgeuse will eventually end its days as a supernova, but not soon, and perhaps not for another 100,000 years or more. Of course, when it does eventually blow up, it will be spectacular and shine as bright as the full moon for a few weeks. It'll be easily visible during the day 
before slowly fading, leaving behind an expanding supernova remnant and a collapsed core in the form of a neutron star or black hole. Could a supernova pose a threat to us here on Earth? To answer this, we have to distinguish between different types of supernovas. Those that form from red supergiants like Betelgeuse are no danger at all if they're hundreds of light years away. Their initial deadly radiation spreads out equally in all directions and eventually becomes too thin to be of any concern. But stars such as A.G. Carinae are a different matter altogether. Very massive stars that toward the end of their lives shed most or all of their outer layers leaving behind a massive exposed core explode as type 1b or type 1c supernovas and these can be very dangerous indeed. Deadliest of all are type 1c's which form from the brightest, hottest, most massive stars in existence. Stars like A.G. Carinae. We'll consider the threat posed by Type 1c supernovas to life-bearing planets in a separate video. <laughs>